Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we'll be doing something different. This will actually be the start of a series where I will be labbing and <laughs> that's it. That's literally it. I just want to show people how much we can accomplish in an hour session on each time. And we'll be labbing various different concepts and different vendors and just different things. We'll be building a big, nice network. And it's going to start from here and it's going to be very fun. And I really hope um, that you stick around and you watch with me what, what I'm doing so that you can maybe take some of that away and apply it to your own networks as well. So I'm going to just remind people again to subscribe to the channel, like and share the videos if you do find any value. Let's get into the first Let's Lab This. All right, so first things first, let's log on to Eve. I am going to use Eve as my preferred emulator. I do have GNS3, um, but I am really taking a liking to Eve. It's really, really a good product. Um, so let's add a new lab. I'm going to just call this, let's lab this. Doesn't like that. Let's take that out. Nice. Now we have a blank canvas. So what do we want to do? We can do whatever we want. Um, so I'm going to just start from the basics. Let's build a couple of small home networks. They could be small office networks, um, but these are not going to be mega corporates or anything. This is just a couple of computers, switches, routers, and let's get them connected to the internet. Let's make that our first priority. So I'm just going to add maybe four virtual computers or dockers I'll just RDP to them actually let's let's tell it to them for now Oof, I want to change the icon I really like the desktop icon it's really nice so let's redo that docker IO server let's make it a desktop go four of you guys uh, let's just bring the ram down a little bit these things don't need a lot of power it's literally just gonna be to emulate some sites I'm just gonna move this around the canvas a bit to where I imagine I want everything to be okay so I've got computers Let's actually bring in a, a, a router, but this router we're going to, I'm going to make it a Mikrotik. This router will primarily be the internet, freaking scary. The whole internet on this one CPU, 256 meg RAM um, <laughs> Mikrotik router. But I, I want you to imagine this Mikrotik, that is the internet. That's, I'm going to add a little cloud here as well, just to make it look more internet-y but that's going to be our internet let's just quickly make it something cloudy cloud oh that's a big cloud just edit some of these dimensions let's make this maybe 200 by I don't want any of the text. I just want a cloud and we might actually increase that size a little bit. It's not too small. Okay. Let's just make that make that three hundred. that looks better okay so that is the internet guys it's, it's legit it's there uh, there we go Let's send this to the back cool that actually looks quite internet-y let's maybe move that up a little 
And now we're gonna add the real internet. And this is really cool about Eve is when we want to add a node or not a node, we want to add a network. And this is just going to be a management NAT. So this will be NATed to my Eve's um, NATed adapter, which is connected to my real computer, which will then give us internet access. So I'm going to just connect this to Ether1 of the Mikrotik. And Ether1's got DHCP. So this network adapter or this network here will actually give me DHCP to the Mikrotik, which is quite nice from Eve as well. So something to look forward to. So that's going to be the internet. Let's quickly start that, see if the internet works. While that starts, let's maybe add a couple of more switches. I'm going to add quite a few switches. I'm going to add about eight of them. Also make the RAM quite small for these. Because they're not going to do anything heavy. It's just going to be for the VLANs. And I might configure some um, LACP trunks or as Cisco likes to call it, port channels just to aggregate some of the ports. And what does that mean? It just means that there's dual links, dual active links. It's able to push out frames. But you'll see when we actually configure it, what it's doing. So let's just add them there. Move that a bit more. Move that a bit more. When I add the cables, I'll neaten it up as well. Okay, let's jump into this micro tick. Just one thing I've noticed about this Guacamole HTML5 um, console is with Mikrotik, you need to, well, you don't need to stop it. You just need to exit the console window and open it up again. And then you're actually able to use it properly, else you can't hit enter. It's a weird thing, it's nothing serious, but just something I need to throw out there for people that's maybe using uh, EVE NG Pro. Okay, let me just close it again, open it, and there we go. So, IP address print. I should actually be getting an IP address from the DHCP. But since it's taking a bit of time, let's just add the IP address. So IP address, add address 192.168.246. Let's make this thing's IP dot one no can't make it the one i'm using that one let's make it dot 10 slash 24 on ether one let's quickly check if i can ping my networks i can ping my actual eve server that i'm connected to brilliant and i can ping these devices so dot two is going to be my gateway that's the nat adapters address so i'm just going to add a route for that destination address will be a default route and I'm going to push that out of no not via there we go and we're going to use 192.168.246.2 fantastic let's check can we get to Google's DNS Hooray! <laughs> we can get to Google's DNS so we've got internet breakout from this router and this Again, we can imagine that is the internet. Isn't that fantastic? That's really crazy, actually. So, we've got switches, we've got a computer. What else do we need on, on a small site? We could use firewalls, we could use routers, but we need layer three. We need something that's able to route traffic. These switches are able to do it. They're, they're layer three as well, but I'm just gonna use them for layer two. So let's add some routers. I'm going to add maybe, let's add two or so Mikrotiks, because I really like Mikrotik. I really enjoy working on them. And they're really lightweight. 
and so freaking cheap these guys are perfect for any any um cpe like really they they get the job done they're just as good as cisco or juniper but they're like at a, at <laughs> a tenth of the price it's it's crazy but they they do have their quirks as well i'm not going to make out like it's the perfect router and this is what you need to buy uh, i'm just saying it's really cheap and very effective so maybe if you're having some issues with budget maybe look at them really good devices okay so i'm going to add myself also just a cisco um let's add i'm actually going to use the cisco iol i don't think i put that for the switches so i might recreate the switches to be honest uh, let's add a router Where's my router? Where did it disappear to? I don't know. So I'll just re-add it. Or I'll refresh the topology to see if it's somewhere. Did I add it or not? Let's look at the notes. There's Microtix, which is... No, I didn't add it. Interesting. Let's try that again. It is layer 3. That's fine. There we go. Okay, so that's just the Cisco router. And I'm going to bring in maybe like a 40 gate as well. So I'm going to use a 40 gate just as the last um, layer 3 device. You don't typically want to use a firewall as a router, but 40 gate does a really good job as well. And these guys are all about. Uh, security fabric so instead of selling routers they sell firewalls and then these firewalls are able to integrate properly with switches and APs and stuff that Fortinet uses so really cool um, but I don't really like them for their routing capabilities you can set up BGP and OSPF and all kinds of cool stuff on here but uh, you, you're gonna have some heartaches as well so just be forewarned if you want to try and use the FortiGate as a router you can but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, I will actually be redoing the switches again because I'm pretty sure these are viral switches and I gave them not enough RAM so these things are gonna be pretty angry at me. So let's just select these, delete them. Okay, so let me re-add my eight switches. I wonder if I can do this. I'm just going to add one of these switches and just start them with this resources. I just want to see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, then we won't be wasting our time. Oof, whenever I add it from there, it doesn't really like that. Okay, let's try it again. Nope. Alright, let's leave the stuff basic then. Let's just see if it adds it now. Ooh, wrong image. <laughs> wrong image. That's actually the right uh, device. That's actually the switch. Let's check. No, that's, that's a router. So let's delete that. Because I don't need that. I need a switch. I'm actually going to do this, do this, do this, do this, and this. So all that I've done is I'm adding eight switches. It is a switch. I'm just giving it a low amount of RAM and I'm just adding like two. You, you can almost imagine an expansion slot with four ports on it. And let's save that. And now it's going to look crappy again. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> let's do it one more time because there's no issue with the switches there. It's just the image was wrong and I don't want to be a perfectionist, but it makes sense to just make it look neat. 
So let's keep it neat. Let's call this a switch. And let's make it a switch image now. So it doesn't look bad. Switch, 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 switch. Come here, switch. There we go. Now that looks proper. That looks good. That looks a lot better. Now I'm happy with the switches. Let's add them roughly back into the same positions they were. So this might also not be a small office if, or a home office if you think about the two switches. I mean, generally that would be a single switch you might have there, unless you're really dedicated to redundancy. But still, your, your computers would only have one uplink, so... Hmm. Okay, so we've got some computers, some routers, some switches. Let's connect them to the internet. Really excited. So I'm just going to start up all of these devices. It might be a good idea just to make sure these switches do run. switches are running so I'm quite happy with that I'm very happy with that to be honest okay so if you're using Eve community you might have to shut everything off before you can connect them like I'm gonna connect now so I'm just gonna connect my devices together very simple connectivity And that goes to our router. And from the router, we can just bring it straight to the internet. It's a little bit of a waste of ports, to be honest, but at least I added additional ports here. So it's, it won't be too bad. And let's refresh our topology. Ah, that looks good. Now let's add cables to the other devices. <clears throat> and these labs, we will be growing them as we continue creating them, especially this series that I'm working on. Um, this is just the beginning to get some devices on a map and to start laying around building a small network and we're gonna grow it uh, exponentially actually which is something I think is quite exciting because I want you to imagine we are that ISP we are that one microtech and these might be our offices but these might be customers that we're providing services to and we're gonna grow that network that cloud is gonna become massive Okay, let's connect all our devices. Almost done. Almost done. Still need to just connect them to the internet. So Mikrotik 15, you will be going to this internet. A little Cisco router, you will be going to the internet. Congratulations. You've done it. <laughs> and then Mr. Firewall, you want some internet? Yes, you do. There you go. Enjoy your internet. All right, so we can see which ports are connected to which devices now as well. Quite handy to configure now. So let's quickly get to it. So I'm just going to set up the routers first. I just want to give the routers or the layer three devices uh, internet access. No, we don't want a license. Well, we want a license. We just, we're not going to license it now. Because if we're labbing this, I'm not going to put money down. It's, it's just a trial. There we go. Cool. So, Mr. Mikrotik, can I use you now? 
Yes, I can. So we first need to make sure that these routers can all get to their gateway, which will be their next hop. So that is the internet cloud. You, you even don't need to imagine that cloud being in the data center or being the actual internet. That could be your next hop. That could be a lot of the times you'll find also CPEs of your ISP that's placed inside your building, like their own router or their own layer three switch or something that you just use as a gateway. So they'll give you maybe an IP address and they'll say, all right, you ordered this internet link through us. We've installed the fiber. Here's our device. Plug your, your router, your router into port one, give yourself this IP address and this is our IP. So that's going to be your gateway. And that's a very typical scenario that happens all the time in the industry. And that's something that you probably have done as well. So you just have, it could be your house connection. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's the same principle. Um, so I'm going to go off a tangent because that's what I was doing. I'm just going to add an IP address between the devices. So this is the CP. So let's start with the private range. Let's make this 10 address at 10.0.0.2 slash 30. It's just going to be for point to point. And we could use a slash 31, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go that deep yet. We'll configure slash 31 later. And I'm just going to assign the slash 30 to my ether two. Let's quickly do the same on the other Mikrotik. Let's make that smaller. There we go. So this is now the internet router. So IP address, add address 10.0.0.1 slash 30 interface ether2 again. Okay. So from this Mikrotik, which is Mikrotik 14, which is the one branch now or the one side. Let's quickly see, can I get out to the internet? No, no, I can't. Why? Well, I don't have a default route yet. And we'll just statically configure those details for now. So 10.0.0.1. I can get to my next hop or my gateway. So let's just add a route. Uh, add destination and then my gateway will be 10.0.0.1 can I ping Google now? no I can't I really can't uh, is there any specific reason why I can't ping Google? well it has to do with the return traffic so basically this 10.0.0.2 it's sending the layer 3 packets to this ISP router and then from here since I'm not natting any traffic from this Mikrotik it's just receiving it as 10.0.0.2 and then it is routing it out it is actually going out to this NAT adapter of mine but the issue is that adapter doesn't know how to get back to this 10.0.0.2 address um, that's why it's failing so we can fix it with two ways um, the one way would be to just nat the traffic out from this ISP router which is something I might just do um, it makes sense to do that so let's jump back on the ISP router because then I don't need to configure any nat rules here for now I can just do all the natting from this ISP router and this you'll see a lot of, of the times at WISPs like wireless internet service providers they, they do this a lot they've got these private IPs connecting to their infrastructures their towers and then they just nat everything out of the core router somewhere so let's quickly do this ip firewall nat add and then our chain will be a source based nat so it's for anything that's coming from something and i'm going to specify an out interface so i'm going to say anything that's leaving ethernet one so any source leaving ether one, I'm going to give an action and that action will be masquerade. So it will effectively masquerade 
itself as the IP address bound to Ethernet 1. That's what this NAT rule does. Now, if I go back to this, make sure to take Cool, <laughs> we got internet, Woo. we got internet, we got it, it's awesome, all's good in, in, in the world of internet land. So that was exciting, we've got a Mikrotik, got internet. Um, let's quickly see if we can just give the switches there some access as well. Well, not the switches, that, that just that user. I think that user there actually feels pretty alone. So let's do that. So let's go IP address, add an address, let's make it 192.168.10.1 will be the router, slash 24, interface is ether1. Do you think if I ping the internet from ether1 it is going to work? I wonder, let's check. So if I ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 with the source of 192.168.10.1 will it work? I'm going to tell you now it won't work because same principle except this time the internet router me the Mikrotik here won't know how to get back to this 192.168.10.1 address so there's two ways we can fix that one way would be we could apply a NAT rule again on this Mikrotik to this Mikrotik so it hides the traffic behind this WAN IP here or alternatively we could set up some routing so I'm actually going to go for the routing option and it's gonna be static routes and I know some people will be no why do you want to do that it's so much uh, effort um, we need to start somewhere and this lab is starting at the basics and static routing it's it's still something people use it you'll still have to use it there's no way around it you can configure as much BGP OSPF ISIS as you want but you're going to need a static route somewhere in your network and it allows you as an administrator to manipulate the traffic however you want or need to so that's very important so let's quickly do that on this cloud mikrotik i'm just going to add another route but this time the destination address will be 192.168.10.0/24 and my gateway will be 10.0.0.2 Perfect. You think it will work now? I think so. Let's check. Cool. It's working. So our LAN portion will have internet. Let's just quickly configure our LAN side. So the switches, I'm not going to add anything on yet. We will be doing LACP. I just want to configure all of these sites before we end off the lab. And we've got about 30-ish minutes left. So let's make the best of them. So on this Docker, I'm going to go ifconfig ether zero default. Now, what am I doing? ifconfig ether. There we go. So my address that I want is 192.168.10.10. Netmask 255.255.255.0 up. Okay. IP route add default I put out add zero 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 default gateway one nine two one six eight ten dot one IP round and Um, I somehow forgot to add the route on Linux, but it's cool. I used my magical Google skills to quickly figure that out. And that's something that you need to understand in IT as well. 
Google is your best friend. Route add default gateway 192.168.10.1. Actually, let's just add, remove that because I don't need that. There we go. So, this Docker now is it able to ping? 192.168.10.1, which is the Mikrotik on site. Yes, it can. I'm pretty confident it can get to the internet as well. But let's see. It can get to the internet as well. So the switches are doing their jobs. They're switching frames to this computer. And this is also able to get to the router. They're all on the default VLAN, which is one. And we've got internet breakout through this Mikrotik in the cloud. Cool. So I can stop that. And we can go to our next micro tick. So it's going to be the same config. Actually, let's jump onto the Cisco. Give ourselves something new to look at. No, we do not want to enter the default configuration. Bye bye. Please don't give us the default configuration. Because that's not fun. That's not fun at all. There we go. Router is up, router is running. So, I just want to see if the interfaces are shut. Yes, they are, which is normal. So, config t int e01, no shut. And I'm going to give this an IP address of 10.0.0. I'm going to make 5 and 6 of this. So, this should be 9 and 10. So, 10. And then the subnet mask, which will be slash 30. Cool. And let's do the same on our cloud microtech IP address add address 10.0.0.9 slash 30 interface will be ether 4. Okay, let's quickly see can I get to the Cisco. I can get to the Cisco. Fantastic. Um, let's just go into E00. Let's unshut that. And let's give that an IP address as well of 192.168. Um, let's make this 12.1 in a slash 24. Perfect toe. And we can exit that configuration and we can go back in the configuration let's just add a default route as well IP route 0000000 and then our gateway will be 10.0.0.9 and I'll give this a name what don't you like IP route I probably added one zero too many there. Ten zero zero nine, and that's something you need to watch out for as well. It happens. Let's make this default route. Save that. So let's quickly check. Will I have internet? Yes, I will have internet. Fantastic. So this router's already got internet. We just added IPs to the WAN, to the LAN. And I'm just going to give this docker an IP as well quickly. So ETH IF config ETH zero. The IP address will be 192.168.12. Let's make all the hosts 10. Net mask 255.255.255.0 up. And then let's say route add default. Default gateway will be 1000. No, 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 it will not be that. <laughs> it will be 192.168.12.1, which is the LAN IP of the router. Let's quickly see can I ping my gateway? Okay. So, with the reason, we should have internet access. Ooh, we don't have internet access. Can you think why? I know why we haven't added the default route or not default route the return route 
on this cloud router to get back to this IP address. So let's quickly add that as well. IP route add destination 192.168.12.0 slash 24. And our gate will be 10.10.0.0.10. 10, 10, 10, 0, 0, 10. Cool. And there we go. Instantly. It's working. We've got internet breakout now from this site and this site. So let's just quickly finish off the other two sites. And then let's see if we can do anything else that's pretty cool. I'm going to leave the cloud open. The cloud Mikrotik. Let's just uh, add the configuration on this 40 gate. Hello, Mr. Fortigate. You being shy? Are you being shy? It looks like you're being pretty shy. Oh, I know what. It's not working. And it's it's nothing that anybody did. Um, it's just on Eve. I'll show you now. Uh, I'm going to delete this node. I'm just going to recreate the Fortigate node. So when I selected this, this was set to the FMG and that's default. I just spaced out when I added it. So we're not going to use FMG because this thing is resource hungry. If you don't at least have four gig of RAM assigned to it, it's not even going to boot. It's just going to look at you funny. So let's add 622, the 40 gate FGT firewall. We'll just add the one. And with the firewall, leave these details black, like default. If you try and add another CPU, since this firewall runs a trial license, it will uh, start to dislike you a lot. It will tell you, no, I will not do anything. I'm just going to ignore you. And then you need to force the resources down before you can use it. So that's one annoyance, but nothing too bad. Okay, so we're adding our links just back again quickly. Okay, there we go. Come now. Links are added. Let's just refresh the topology. And this happening, that's got nothing to do with Eve. That's more of my computer and my resources and my limitations. You are forced to change your password. <laughs> I really like that. Um, this is a new, the latest um, build of Fortinet's 40 gate, uh, 622. And this thing is quite obsessed with you changing your password when you log in the first time. And I'm going to be an idiot and just make the password password all over case. But I like that they make you force change the password. They, security should be a big concern for everybody. All right, so we're on the 40 gate config system interface. We're going to edit two of the interfaces. Firstly, we're going to edit port one, which is going to our Mikrotik. So with this 40 gates, port one is generally set as DHCP. So we just need to set the mode to static and we just need to give it an IP address, set IP and 40 gates all about the set and execute commands. Like I get annoyed sometimes because I want to do a ping, I type ping. It just doesn't work. So you need to hit that execute first. So let's set the IP to 192.168.13.1. No, no, no. I keep wanting to swap the, the WAN and LAN addresses around. So let's set the IP to 10, 0, 0. So that was 10. So this will be, yeah, this will be 16. And that one will be 15 slash 30. Set IP. Why don't you want me to set an IP, little guy? Set IP 192.168. No, stop doing that. 10.0.0. Now it should be. Ah, oh, that's my issue. So that actually should be 14 and 13. That's my issue. quick subnetting in the head it's fine it's all good and I'm going to next this and I'm just going to edit that uh, port 2 let's set an IP address 192.168 
dot 13.1 slash 24. Let's set allow access and let's set that for ping HTTP HTTPS SSH. I just want to check port one, see the allow access. Okay, so this is all it allows, which is perfect. And we can end that. Just need to add ourselves a default route like the other devices. Config router static. Edit zero set destination. And that will be a default route. Set the gateway, which will be 10.0.0.13. And set the device, which will be port one. Perfect. Next end. Won't work yet. Still quickly need to set it up on that Mikrotik. So let's do that. The cloud Mikrotik. So I'm going to IP address, add address 10.0.0.13. Slash 30 on ether 5. And then I'm just going to route add the LAN address. Make the gateway 10, 0, 0, 14. So from this 40 gate, I should actually have internet access now as well. Let's quickly check if I do. I don't. Execute ping. 10.0.0.13 Hmm Well that ain't normal Let's just see I did add it to ether 5 Is my configuration right though? Show system interface port 1 So 14 that's right these details are all right. So in theory, I should actually have, let's just refresh the topology. And I might just delete the connection, reconnect it. I've had stuff like that on virtual environments before. Just want to see if that's not the case. Okay, let's quickly see, can I ping now? Hmm. Still can't ping. That's really strange. That's not normal. I've added a ton of these devices. Uh, let's see. 10.0.0.13. Ping 10.0.0.13.14. So for whatever reason, this 40 gates not liking it. And this is the type of stuff I want to actually show people when things go wrong because IT is a maze and stuff happens and breaks and you need to figure it out. So let's figure it out. I mean, it's just a slash 30 over Ether 5 to this port 1 on the 40 gate and we can't ping across. So that's wrong. That shouldn't be uh, an issue. So let's just quickly check here. Show system ARP. Now let's get. We don't have any ARP. Let's quickly check what happens with the switches on the Docker. Let's just see if we can get to the firewall locally from the Docker. Uh, I have config. ETH zero, and then our IP address, which will be 192.168.13.10, and then the mask, and then route add default gateway. We're gonna make that 192.168.13.1. Can I get to the 40 gate on that IP? I can, so I know it works from this component so I can get there. So this is definitely something between the Mikrotik and the 40 gate. 
So let's just revisit our configuration quickly. Config system interface, edit port one, show. So I've got an IP of 10.0.0.14 on that subnet, so that is right. And this allow access would just allow me to ping or manage the device if I came from the outside. So those details are right. IP address. <clears throat> 10.0.0.13, that's definitely right. Ten zero zero fourteen. I just can't get there. So I'm quickly going to try something not normal. So I'm going to move the port that we connected. So let's move it from Ether. Let's use Ether 5 still. Let's move this to port 3. And then this port one, I'm just gonna set the IP to blank. And then we're going to edit port three. Let's set the IP to 10.0.0.14 slash 30. Let's set the allowed access ping HTTP HTTPS SSH for get manager and Talnet maybe. Okay, let's see. Can I ping? It really makes no sense, guys. I've Got no clue why this firewall is not playing with us. I might just move it to a different subnet. So let's try that. Config. Reconnect the cable from port 1 to Ether 6. This is just something else we're trying. So, interface, IP address, add. Let's make it 172. 172.16.01 slash 30 interface ether 6 config system int edit port 1 set ip 172.16.02 slash 30 next and execute ping 172.16.01 Okay, I can get to that. I can't get to the other address. So <laughs> I'll figure that out uh, separately. So we'll just keep this new uh, WAN address we added. It might even be that Ether 5 that was giving some issues. But it's not the end of the world. It's just <laughs> one of those things. So remember also, if you do add things like this and you run into issues, don't just give up. Figure it out. If you don't figure it out, you're not causing a solution you're causing issues you're basically ignoring the issue which is very dangerous in the IT world okay so I'm happy with that I'm going to continue with this Mikriti quickly so this is the last site that we need to set up and after I've set the site up we'll actually call it for the video because um, I don't want this to extend to too long but at least we've accomplished quite a bit. We've added four sites, given them internet access. So it is a, a good starting point. So let's add an IP address to ether2. And the address will be 10.0.0. Let's make it 18 and 17. So 18 will be the CPE. Let's go to our cloud Mikritik. So interface ether, no, stop that. IP address, 
add address 10.0.0.17.30 on Ether3. Can we ping across 10.0.0.18? We can, so that's perfect. All right, let's quickly add ourselves a LAN address. 192.168.11.1 slash 24 interface ether 1 and add a default route out IP route add destination 0000, 000, 000, 000 and our interface or our gateway will be 10 0, 0. no it won't well well it will I'm actually thinking about the docker now so this will be 10 to 17. okay that's good that is good we should actually have some internet access out from the router we do on the cloud micritic we just need to add another route back as well for the 192.168.11.0 slash 24 subnet over the 10.0.0.18 gateway Okay, and then we just configure our Docker. I have config ETH zero, give ourselves an IP 192.168.11.10. Net mask 255.255.255.0 up. Route. Add default gateway 192.168.11.1. Let's see, do I have internet access from the Docker? I do. I do, I do, I do. If I've got internet access to the Docker, do you think all these networks will also see each other? I've got a sneaky suspicion they will, because we do have static routes to all of the LAN addresses from this router. And our default route out from these routers just pushes it to this micro-tick. So we can quickly test. So you can almost think this is also a fake, a fake MPLS. <laughs> Let's quickly see if that is the case. And that is the case. So unintentionally, we created a fake MPLS. Um, that should not be the case, but it is what it is. So yeah, I'm actually going to cut off the video here. We will explore more of this lab in upcoming videos where we will be adding a lot more. Like I said, this is baseline. This is just a couple of uh, devices, firewalls, routers, switches, computers, and we're going to grow this. So stick around for the next video. It is going to get a bit more intense. I mean, this is a starting position. I know it's boring for some people, but at least we have a base topology that we can start to grow from here. So I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video next week. See ya.